Hi everyone, my name is Angela and I'm a speech and language pathologist at Children First. I was asked to talk to you about our role when feeding concerns arise in the children that we're working with. Feeding is often looked at using a team approach that involves caregivers as well as other Children First staff. We also want to make sure that your child has been seen by his or her doctor just to make sure that we're ruling out any underlying medical concerns that may be contributing to the feeding difficulties. As a speech and language pathologist at Children First, our role involves evaluating your child's oral motor skills required for feeding, your child's chewing skills, as well as your child's ability to swallow. We look at the structure of your child's face, their lips, their jaw, their tongue, as well as structures inside your child's mouth. We also want to see if these structures are functioning the way they should be. We also look to make sure that the structures are symmetrical, so making sure that we're not seeing any drooping on either side of the face. We also want to assess the strength and tone of the muscles. We look at the range of motion of the muscles as well as how all the movements are coordinated. We also want and like to observe the child while eating or being fed by caregivers using foods from home that the child may be offered during a mealtime. These foods may be preferred foods that they enjoy or non-preferred foods that they may be have difficulty eating. We look for a variety of things depending on the child's age and food repertoire. We may look to see how an infant or young child is using a suck-swallow pattern to drink from a bottle. As well, once your child begins to eat more solid foods, we like to see how they are containing the food in their mouth, how they're able to move it around in their mouth, how they're able to chew the food, and then how, finally, how are they able to swallow the food. Like I mentioned before, it's important to make sure that there, no, there are no underlying medical concerns that may be contributing to the feeding difficulties. Sometimes we like to refer to for what is called the modified barium swallow study, and that's a test that is done at the hospital by a speech and language pathologist, and it gives the speech pathologist an x-ray image of all the muscles involved for swallowing, and again, just to rule out any medical concerns that may be underlying some feeding difficulties. Once all those medical concerns have been ruled out, we can look at different activities to address the concerns we're seeing. In some instances, waking up your child's system prior to mealtimes gives the muscles a little boost before we need to use them. So this can be done through alerting activities for our mouth and body. This may include things like taking a washcloth and rubbing and applying pressure to the cheeks and then moving towards your lips before mealtimes, again, just to wake up the system. You might also want to try using a cold spoon during mealtimes or varying temperatures of food, offering a hot food and then offering a cold food. And sometimes offering an ice cold liquid helps wake up the tongue. Activities to improve chewing can be simply just doing the motion of the up and down chewing with your child. Um, also, providing a model for your child when you're eating, so maybe doing an exaggerated chew just so they can see the motion of chewing when you're eating. As well, placement of food helps with chewing. So you might try to place the food towards the side of your child's mouth and then remembering just to alternate sides, just giving both sides the ability to grow the muscles and then hopefully um, building a, a more mature pattern over time. As well, regular exposure to various oral motor inputs can also be helpful in building muscle tone and movements. Things like biting and chewing and blowing are good activities to try. Some examples include making an edible necklace or bracelet with Cheerios or any cereal that your child can bite off, as well using straws that are twisty or a little bit narrow just require a bit more effort to pull the liquid through the straw, as well as trying something a little bit more thick, so a smoothie or a milkshake, again, just gives your, gives your lips um, just a little extra effort to pull up through the straw, so that would be a good activity to try. Also blowing bubbles in water through a straw or just blowing bubbles um, as a fun activity to do with your child um, is something that would help strengthen those lip muscles. Um, playing straw games. So if you take a straw and blow through the straw and try to move the pom-poms in a pom-pom race um, or cotton balls, or if your child's not quite um, able to blow through a straw, you can just blow without the straw. Um, to build up those muscles. As well, taking a Kleenex and playing a game to see how far you can lift it up with your when you're blowing, so um, is also a fun game that um, kids can again play and just build up those um, muscles. Um, so that's it for now. I hope you found that helpful. Um, I hope everyone has a great day.